Hi, I'm Mulberry. Today I'm going to show you uh, Axiom's latest tool coming soon to the mod, the Path Tool. The Path Tool is an incredibly powerful tool that allows you to generate complex geometry uh, based on points and drawing lines between those points. So I'm going to go over in this demo a few of the uses of this tool, uh, although obviously you should try it out for yourself and see how it can fit into your workflow, whether that be for creating uh, organics or terrain or structures or everything in between. Uh, to get started with the tool, all you need to do is click on a point uh, and it will create a gizmo here. You can then click on another point and you now have a line between those two points. You can continue clicking and it will add more points. If you do Control Z, it will undo the point you just placed. Uh, if you select an earlier point like this and you click, it will insert a point in the middle, like so. Uh, you can click on these white boxes to select the node, uh, and then you can adjust it using this gizmo over here. And you can obviously see how that affects it in real time. Uh, once you're happy with your line and you want to paste it in, you can hit enter. And just like that, you have a line. All right, so I'm going to go through the different curve types that are available here. There's five. And then after that, I'm going to go into some of the more complex options. So to begin with, we have uh, the Bresenham line, which you just saw, uh, which is a very, very simple line uh, that uh, has a smaller number of blocks that it uses to go between two points uh, compared to the DDA line, uh, which will use... Uh, or rasterize every block that intersects with the line. Uh, moving on, we have the catenary. The catenary uh, is the line that's formed by hanging a flexible material like rope and having it fall due to gravity. And you can see uh, it looks something like this. Uh, with the catenary, you have options to invert it, like so. So you get an arch instead of a uh, hanging rope. Uh, and you can also adjust the slack over here. All right, so moving on from the catenary, we have the Catmull Rom spline. This is an interpolating spline, uh, which uh, where the line will pass through all of the points you selected. So if we start selecting some points here, you can see that the line is smooth, it arcs around here, but importantly, it passes through all of the points that we selected. Lastly, we have the Bezier curve, uh, which is also an interpolating spline, but uh, it does not pass through these midpoints. These midpoints simply act as control points to change uh, how the line uh, moves from the start to end. And obviously, by adjusting these control points, you can get all kinds of uh, very complex shapes using the Bezier curve here. All right, so those are the five curve types you have available. Uh, for most of these curve types, you have the option of being able to adjust the width here. Uh, so you can this uh, width slider here applies globally to all of the uh, line segments. However, the path tool also lets you have uh, specific radiuses for specific uh, nodes. And to do that, all you can do is click this override radius button over here and that will allow you to adjust the radius of this node independent of the other ones, uh, which allows you to create all kinds of uh, crazy shapes. So in addition to being able to override the radius, you can also override the block. So if we do that here, you can see we end up with a gradient, uh, this node here being associated with granite, and then it fades into stone between its two neighboring points. Uh, lastly, uh, related to the uh, being able to override the radius, you have the ability to control the easing. So by default, the easing uh, uses linear, uh, which will essentially just uh, linearly go between the uh, two radiuses. So the midpoint will be halfway between. Uh, you can change the easing to change how it interpolates from this point to the next point. And the easing can be controlled uh, per node. So we select this start node over here and let's change the easing of it to slight. And you can see the easing type here is ease in, which basically means that it will keep the larger radius for a longer time 
uh, before it eases into the new one. Uh, you can change this to ease out, which means that it quickly loses the larger radius here and eases um, towards this point here. And then we have in out, which basically does both, it has a bit more bulk here and loses a bit of bulk here. Uh, you can change the amount of easing uh, through this slider. So this is slight easing. You can have also have quadratic and cubic and quartic like so. Uh, now I'm going to go through a couple of the uses. So obviously, as you just saw here, uh, it can be used to create spikes. So if we, for example, do a slight ease in, uh, you can see we end up with this nice spike structure. Uh, although it is a little bit uh, plain because it's just going in one direction. So to fix that, let's turn this into a Bezier curve. Let's add a control point after this one over here. Okay, now we're going to have to override radius. And this was 1 and 12. So let's put this at, I don't know, 6. Uh, and there you go. We have now a rather interesting spike that we've created. And you can obviously adjust this control point, move it around, and you can see how that affects the uh, shape in real time, which is very cool. Uh, obviously, uses for the catenary are, well, you know, you can create sort of bridges, hang between two points. Obviously, you can control the slack here. So there you go, bridge, bridge. Uh, you can also invert, uh, which, you know, uh, is useful in its own right. Uh, the last kind of use case I'm going to show you is the camel rom spline and using it to create rivers. So let's say, for example, we wanted a river to pass through here. Uh, to that, let's start selecting some points here. Uh, let's say we want to pass through these trees, and then let's let's end over here. Let's say right. Uh, let's actually add another point in between. Cool. So this is the shape of our river. Uh, now let's increase the radius on this a bit. Uh, and then we can switch the block type here from stone to air, and you can see the result. Uh, let's make it be a bit wider down here, so you can obviously override the radius. There you go, we get a wide mouth. Let's make this a bit wider. Like so, let's make this a bit wider. Something like that, and let's make this uh, a bit wider. Around there. All right, and here's my river shape. So let's hit enter to paste that in. And then obviously you can go over it with a tool like flood fill to fill this river in. All right, those are some of the things that you can do with Axiom's new path tool. I'm very excited to see what you'll create with it. Thank you for watching and bye.